Hello everybody out there in the uh, music community. This is Mike uh, or Soldier 777 here. Um, I figure I hear a very special episode uh, where I don't normally shoot videos uh, no more than uh, once a week or every two weeks uh, at least. But uh, I figure I show you show a special episode uh, regarding one of my favorite bands uh, whose member passed away. Uh, which is Michael Bloodgood of Bloodgood. As you may know, uh, they gave a concert back in uh, February of this year. Um, um, I believe it was in Ohio, if not mistaken. I believe uh, White Cross uh, opened up for him or co-headline or something like that. I'm not sure if that was the only date they did or, was, or, or were there other dates that they were going to do. But at that concert, uh, shortly after the concert was over, Michael Bloodgood had a stroke and he was in recovery. And there, um, a few days ago, he passed away. Uh, to, our, to my surprise, uh, Michael Bloodgood, who's a family member, basis for Van Bloodgood. And uh, so I was quite shocked and somewhat saddened because, you know, when you have a band as prolific as Bloodgood, uh, whose music has whose music uh, has inspired you, you know, kind of a shock that that uh, you know one of your, I mean, you look at these bands as sort of a mentor uh, or some kind of guidance, uh, you know, the lyrics kind of inspires you, and when have someone pass away, it's it's kind of uh, you know it's surprising uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, so this is a little tribute to uh, Bloodgood and the band itself and Michael Bloodgood. And as you may know too, a few months earlier, uh, their drummer Kevin Whistler passed away, uh, unfortunately. So that was a surprise as well. Uh, he was their drummer for off and off for the past, uh, I believe since around, uh, if not mistaken, around 89, 90, uh, up, till, uh, up until um, he took sick. So he was a drummer off and on as well, uh, you know, and he played on a couple of their studio albums and, uh, and, uh, and their live albums. So yeah, that was, that was a shock too. Very talented musician. But before I get to that, uh, I want to ask you guys a question. Um, as you may know, my, when you look at this video, it's going to be reverse. The right will be the left and the left be right. Also, I'm trying to insert a... Uh, intro to my channel uh, to, to each video sorry so and I got Windows 11 and I have trouble doing it so if anybody uh, can help me with that let me know um, to get everything in sync from my channel uh, as well so anyway let's get right to the blood good uh, the blood good collection or the blood good story um, so let me start from the beginning so um, I became uh, a fan of Christian rock, hard rock, and heavy metal in 1985. And the first few bands I really took a liking to uh, was Daniel Band, Rez Band, uh, Jerusalem, Petra, and Striper. And I had a lot of these bands in my collection, or I would borrow these uh, cassettes uh, from my friends, or one or two of my friends. And then, uh, so that was in 85 to 86 period. In 86 to 8, uh, around the 87 period, there was a, another batch of bands, what I call Wave 2. The first one band I mentioned was Wave 1. This is what I call Wave 2. And that was uh, Baron Cross, Bloodgood, Bazaar Prophet, Saint, and Leviticus. That was the next um, wave of, of bands I got into. So Bloodgood being one of them. So I got into them, Bloodgood around, I would say around early 87. I remember being uh, going up to a friend's house for a brief visit. And I believe he taped off uh, a tape for me of the first album, if not mistaken. I remember being cold on a wintry day, and I think it was early 87, and I had the first debut album taped off. Then what happened was that in, in August or July of 87, I was on an exchange trip with my church, with a church. It was, I'm in a local, local, uh, at the time I was located in Grand Falls, Newfoundland. And I currently live at St. John's, or sorry, Mount Pearl, next to St. John's, Newfoundland. So Grand Falls is about four hours away, uh, drive-wise. And we had an exchange trip with uh, a youth group from our church from, um, from Sydney and Victoria, British Columbia. 
So I remember going flying over there and dropping into a book and Bible place um, in uh, Sydney. Uh, no, Victoria, Victoria it was. And as me know, most book and, most book and Bible uh, stores uh, would have the heavy metal section, uh, other um, put back in stock room. I wouldn't have too much too much heavy stuff. My local book and Bible store would have the heavier stuff on special order only, like the heavy metal stuff. Any rock, hard rock or rock would be in the front shelves, like probably Daniel Van, Res, uh, Daniel Van, uh, Silver Res, uh, you know, Petra, that kind of stuff. That were the only ones that was, as I remember, way back in 85, 86, 84, uh, were in the front shelves. And when heavy metal became more popular in 86, it put it like on special order only. Well, this pick up, and I heard you guys in the States mention the fact that they would put the uh, the heavier stuff under the counter and would sell, sell in like generic paper bags, almost like it's a covert operation. Well, this pick up book and Bible was quite liberal. They had the heavy metal stuff up front. You can go and select it. They, I remember seeing Bazaar Prophet, Striper stuff. Uh, you know, this is back in, early, this is back in August 87. Uh, the only book and Bible in, in locally. Uh, no, it wasn't Book and Bibles, it was an independent store uh, ran by a member of uh, Lewisport Church in Lewisport, which was a half hour, 45 minutes from, from Grand Falls. They had heavy metal, Christian heavy metal stuff, high rocks up front, but they weren't affiliated with, with the church. They were just an independently owned, owned store. And I would go there for certain heavy metal purchases too from, from around 87, 88 up until around 91, I believe, in that period. But other than that, uh, uh, all, all of most stores would have the uh, the book and Bible stores would have everything on special order that I, that I was aware of only and or, or would have it in the back stock room Anyways, let's get, get back to it. So anyway, so I bought when I went to a trip over in BC I bought the first two cassettes the debut album and the detonation the first on cassette and, and I remember too that uh, particular uh, fall uh, not fall sorry August of 87 August as you may know too those who are familiar with this uh, people go blueberry picking uh, around, around around mid to late August blueberry picking I remember having the detonation cassette in my Walkman listening to that while I was picking blueberries uh, so that was a bit of a memory of mine so uh, so then from then on I became a blood good fan had her first three albums on cassette and then back around 15 years ago Oh, and I bought the um, um, I bought the um, All Sent Together on CD. I think it was back in '92. I think it was late '92. I bought the All Sent Together on CD, and I ha never had Out of Darkness on any format. Um, but I had the uh, uh, taped off uh, a Live American Shaking World. Though that live album. Uh, but at this point in time right now, I have everything on CD or vinyl. So let's get right to the collection. So what we have here is, uh, is the trading cards. We go to reissue the couple of their CDs, a few of their albums. So this is the um, Middle Missionary uh, trading card and um, uh, Danger Close trading card. There you have it. So it's kind of qu quite cool to have that in my collection there. There you have it. So let's get right to the CDs. So here we have the Girder Ratio of Metal Missionaries. And I got that in the mail there a few months back from Girder Music. There you have it there. And uh, it's quite nice to have, it's really nice to have them in my collection. And what I like about this one is that, you know how Sherbert got the, got the young black? It's got the red and black. That's pretty cool. I thought it was quite cool. So, um, yeah, so Michael Bloodgood, bass and vocals, Les Carson, lead vocal, David Zafiro, guitar and vocals, and JT Taylor, drums. Now, this is the enhanced version of uh, Metal Missionaries because the original version had a wig, except the lamb, and was a pain from the first album, and Battle of Flesh was from, of course, Detonation, and there's an 85. Uh, radio interview and Man in the Middle was a demo version. So basically, the, the demo only had four songs Awake, Set the Lamb, Angel Pain, 
and Battle Flesh. Well, that was demo. Uh, they put a version back uh, 25th anniversary, which would have been 85, 95, uh, 2005, 2015. 2015 version on uh, Bloody Good Records. Also had bonus tracks, the 85 radio interview, and Man in the Middle, which is a demo version of the song, which was then she ended up being on, on, um, on um, Danger, Danger Close. Um, but this version also included uh, Black Snake and Awake. So I thought that was, that was pretty cool. So I got two more digital songs, Black Snake and Awake. So this has got more songs then the both the original four song demo EP came in '85, and the the 25th anniversary version came out. Uh, uh, 25th was '85, '95, 2005, 2010. When it came out, sorry, 2010. The the CD version came out 2010 on, on a bloody good records that Blood put themselves. So there you have it. Very good to have my collection. This next version is the 10th millennium version. Of the debut album, uh, came out in 2010. So here's the original artwork there, and this is the uh, enhanced artwork. And I got the there's only hundred of these press, and I got the uh, version that's got the original uh, the, the regular um, ten song CD or album, sorry, and uh, got, it's got some a demo. I think it's got some. Uh, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I got some. Uh, a Black Snake Center version, uh, Awake Alternate Mix. That's kind of cool. Have it, have that those versions. Also got a live concert right here. So there you have it. And this is a pretty good album. Um, the only song I don't like is Demon Run, but every song, every song is good on this one. All nine songs. Uh, great, great debut. Uh, I've been thinking about doing a doing a um, uh, top uh, debut albums of, of some of the bands that I'm into. I think we're doing that as well, so that's something I'd probably be down a pipe. So there you have it. And that originally came out in '86, uh, by the way, on Frontline Records. Here we have Blood Good, uh, Detonation. And as you may know, uh, this has a very famous uh, The Messiah Crucified, which is awesome tunes. Uh, it also has great tunes too, like Battle Flesh, Vibrant People. Uh, Alone Suicide, another good song. Um, Eat the Flesh, Holy Fire, Crucified the Messiah, Live Wire. So those seven or eight songs are probably the best songs in the album. Detonation. Um, here's oh, it's just my cat went by. So here's the uh, visual artwork, which is really cool. I like the artwork. Here's the uh, the enhanced artwork. This is also the 2010 uh, Tens Million Records, um, which same as the uh, debut was on. And uh, this was this was put out by uh, Rox Records or Rox Productions or Bill Baffert, that that umbrella of, of group or companies. And this also has the concert. This only hundred these press were had the backup, backup. Uh, sorry, a hundred these press which also has a lot which which has a live CD uh, as well or a live album as well. Uh, just to clarify, there's not that there's a hundred, only hundred these press, uh, but it's only hundred press that had the second disc of the live of a live concert. That's what I meant to say. So only 100 of these had the second disc, which was I got both versions, uh, both uh, CDs on uh, with that second disc. There you have it. Logo Detonation, which came out in 1987. Also, that album went platinum as well. So there you have it. Another great album. Now, Logo took a slightly mellower direction for this album, uh, but still is a, good, is a good album. So this is uh, Rock and a Hard Place, which came out in 1988. Here's a Digipack version, which came out by Retroactive Records. And uh, this also has a lot of great songs. Uh, they're shaking it. Um, Never be the same is a good song. Uh, Pre the presence is a good song. Uh, Do or die. She's gone. And seven. That's probably a top, um, uh, some of uh, some of my uh, favorite tracks of the album. So Blood the Rocket Hard Place really came in 1988 on the original Front Frontline Records. There you have it. Next one is called Out of Darkness, which came out in 1989, and this is another good album. Uh, I got the retroactive uh, records version of this, and um, 
as a little tribute to the band Bloodgood, what I did when I was at work, uh, I worked two jobs, one for the federal government of Canada, and I worked part-time at Home Depot Tour Rental. And while I was working at Home Depot Tour Rental Tuesday night, I was uh, on YouTube, I was playing the entire, this entire album uh, on, on, the, on the computer while I was doing my work. And uh, it was pretty quiet and all around. And uh, every song of this one is good, except for the only song I'm not keen on is Changing Me, it's more of a ballad. But every single song in this album is good, all eight songs. Uh, Out of Darkness, Let My People Go, America, It's All Right, Top of the Mountain, it's an excellent ballad. Uh, hey You, Mad Dog World, and New Age Legion, Delusion. Great, great album. This is probably, I'm thinking probably this one in the debut is probably my uh, two favorite albums, followed, followed probably by Detonation. It'd be a third ranking. If I were to, if I were to rank the albums, but but you know usually when you rank the albums only by hair string because they're all good that kind of thing. So yeah, so those reasons came in nineteen eighty nine. There you have it. Next up we have Bloodgood uh, Live in America. This is the original um, uh, Intense Records version. As we know, Tense and Frontline were the same. Um, uh, company or, or uh, Intense was a subsidiary of Frontline. So here we have a Blood of Live America, excellent live album. Uh, if you can get a chance, pick this one up, you won't be disappointed. Um, uh, so, I mean, this has great, this is sort of, uh, so basically when Blood of went on tour, uh, they were promoting the album uh, uh, Darkness. So what he did, he did a um, two concert deal. And I believe it was November 1990, and they had the themes built on certain ideas. So this is called Live in America. It was based about American society, and the other one was called Shaking the World. So we got dual. Got I mean, like just listen to this, just listen to the track listing. Out of Darkness, uh, which is from the from Out of Darkness. Do or Die. It's All Right. Hey You. Alone Suicide. She's Gone. Um, uh, shaking It. Uh, Soldier of Peace, America, uh, Never Be the Same. Then you got Melly, Demon on the Run, Killing the Beast, and Battle of Flesh and Black Snake. Man, what a, what, what a list of great songs. What a list. Awesome. Awesome. So that came out in 19, 1990. Uh, Action All Rhyme. I think the concert w was in late 89. I think the concerts were, if I'm not mistaken. And the album came out in 1990. I think that's how it works. So here's uh, Shaking the World. So there you have Michael Blood on the front there. And just listen to the track listing. Let My People Go, great song. Mad Dog Roll, Top of the Mountain Awake, Eat the Flesh, Holy Fire Crucify, uh, The Messiah, Accept the Lamb, which is more of a choir rendition, not the actual song. Seven, A New Age Illusion. So this sort of event circ circulating around the, uh, the, the uh, trial, uh, death, crucifixion, death, and resurrection, resurrection of Christ. That's what this is built on. And this one here, the other ones, are sort of built on the decadence, of, uh, decadence, or the, or the, the life of, of American society or society in general around the world, uh, uh, that in fact need a savior. So great, great uh, collection, have, have a great have my collection. So uh, I'm gonna get you guys to stay right there. I gotta pull something out, but I forgot to bring it with me. One second. Okay, sorry, but I'm back. So, also, I have the video version of two albums called Rock Theater, uh, which is the two concerts on DV format. It was originally released at least on VHS with the same artwork on the front cover as these two. But uh, several years back, they, it was transferred or changed DVD, which is called Rock Theater, uh, which, as you may know, Blood is a very theatrical band. 
and uh, and uh, they would have theatrics in their uh, in their concerts, and that was a uh, and as you may know, uh, they had dancers and uh, that kind of thing during the Love America Shake and Roll tour. So this is a video video of that called Rock Theater. And it comes with uh, Alive in America and Shaping the World. There you have it. So, there you have it. So, it has the, uh, let me just pull this over some show you. So, has a little uh, insert there. I sort of got the credits inside there. It's kind of cool. So, that's pretty cool to have my collection. So, there you have it. So, that was the sort of the uh, first, um, the first, um, uh, I'm going to say six years of Blood Code, because they you know Blood was originally from 84. And uh, I don't think first they were like a hard rock metal band. I think uh, they were a rock band. I think from, if not mistaken, when from 84, Michael Blood would want to take uh, some classic praise songs or hymns and transcribe it in a heavy metal format or hard rock format. Because uh, I don't think he was familiar with uh, the idea of Christian hard rock and metal. Uh, but I think as time progressed, uh, they changed, as you may know, from the Middle, Mission, Middle, Miss, Middle Missionaries debut, uh, or sorry, demo, uh, they progressed and changed to what, to what we know today as, as blood goats. There you have it. So, next up we have uh, All Santa Together. Uh, this was sort of like a um, not so heavy version of blood good. Uh, I think they went back to what the sound that permeated uh, Rock and Hard Place wasn't as heavy as um, uh, Out of Darkness, Detonation, and the first album. Uh, but still has some good, good tunes. SOS, All Stand Together, uh, Skate from the Fire, uh, that kind of stuff. So um, Now, Michael Bloodgood, if he, I think the band had plans of re-recording re, re this, this album or remixing it uh, to have more thicker sound uh, but with Bloodgood calling it quits because of the passing of Michael Bloodgood uh, I guess that's not going to happen uh, but it will be interesting here if they did if they would have uh, re-recorded this it would be very interesting so there you have it Michael Bloodgood all sitting together uh, came out in 1991 there you have it Next up, we have To Journey with, with Love, uh, which is another live album from, from Bloodgood. Very, very good album. Um, it's got like Kingdom Come, Heaven on Earth, Let My People Go, Out of Love, Stand All Stand Together, Hey You, Anguish of Pain, Escape from the Fire, uh, Holy Spirit Jane, which I'm going to use the track, I'm going to leave you heart, Self Disruption, Drum Solo, Crucify, Enter Messiah, and Seven. Um, this is back when they toured Germany and Europe. Uh, or at least Germany back in 90, in the 93 period and it was originally released on re originally independently released back in 93 but uh, Magdalene Records which was the precursor to uh, what is now known retroactive records through Mad Hunt uh, put this out in 2000 and the highlight of this one I think of this album is Intro Messiah uh, where Les Carlson the translator in German uh, let's do a bit of, bit of uh, on stage preaching or discussion or explanation and the translator is talking, talking and then he cuts into Messiah uh, you should, if you haven't heard that intro Messiah go online and listen to it it's awesome man and you really feel the power of the Holy Spirit uh, I find myself when you, when, you, when you bring up when you listen to it it's, it's, it's impactful you should go on and listen to it really good it's blood good to Germany with love uh, Commute 93 released in, in 2000. Uh, next up we have, so after not hearing uh, from Bloodgood in a while, uh, they saw, I think they regrouped around 2007, and then Oz Fox from Striper, uh, was on again off again guitar player, uh, started in 2007. And they did some tour dates and concerts or one-offs or tours. And then they released a, an album in 2000, sorry, 19, 2013 called Danger Be Close. And here's a Gerda Records re, reissue of that album. So it's really cool. Danger Be Close, and uh, here's the inside there. And this has got a lot of good songs. It's got Lamb of God, uh, I Will, good, good tune. 
uh, Pray uh, in the Trenches is a, is a cool song. Crush Me is an interesting song. That's that's more of a, a ballad. A very good song. It's a kind of acoustic but less singing. And it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, in the Trenches, Man in the Middle, good tune. Uh, yeah, so a lot of good songs in this one. This is the last album that he put out, really good, uh, in terms of studio wise. Really good album. Then in 2020, uh, 2019, uh, they did a documentary of the band and and uh, uh, Bloodgood. This is produced by Paul um, Bloodgood, Michael Bloodgood's son. Do I have his name right? Uh, yeah, Paul Michael Bloodgood, Blood, uh, Michael Bloodgood's son. Uh, in a trench is about the is about the um, uh, what the band experienced over the years, the trials, the the tribulations uh, of the band through the years, band member changes, uh, band member disagreements, that kind of thing. Uh, so there's a Blu-ray version of it, and I believe the band won a lot of, a lot of awards with this. And here's the inside of it here. Great, great to have in my collection. Really glad to have this in my collection. And here's the In the Trenches uh, soundtrack, which, ki which contains uh, some of the songs, classic songs, plus contains uh, classic versions or um, clips or remastered versions of songs or alternate versions of songs as well. Um, for example, it contains a song 7, uh, but it's got the piano intro, the mellow part of the song cut out. It's got the hard rock version of the song, which is about three, three, three minutes, 20 seconds. That's really cool here, just a short version of the song. That's really cool. Um, also has SOS and uh, what's the other song? I think it's got another song too, which I can't remember. But it's got a couple songs from um, All Stand Together with a thicker production and the thicker guitars and production and overall sound. Which makes which I'm very interested if they if Les Carlson or um, what's left of the band decide to put out uh, like legacy tracks or um, alternate versions of songs in the future to help support um, the band. Uh, you know if they were to put out like legacy tracks, even though the band's no longer uh, call call it quits. Uh, if they decide to put legacy tracks or alternate versions or revamp production in the future, like a compilation uh, or unreleased tracks, I'll be very interested in hearing it. I will buy it. So, yeah, it'd be quite interesting to hear if they're having anything that's unfinished or uh, mostly finished. It'd be very interesting. So, here you have it in the trenches. There you have it. Let's get to the vinyl. This is running 20 minutes. got to be as quick as possible. Theory had the girder reissue of uh, Metal Missionaries. And uh, here's the back of it there. And here's the vinyl on, on black vinyl. Very cool, has my collection. Here we have the uh, debut from Retroactive Records. There you have it. And uh, this is a gatefold. I won't pull it right now, right now, but it's got a big picture of the band with the classic um, um, debut era uh, picture band. There you have it. And this is on, uh, I believe is on, uh, here you have it, Spider Vinyl. It's really cool. There you have it. This is this is so awesome. So Gerda Records uh, did a great job. Greg Hayes. There you have it. Here we have uh, Debt Nation. Which, as you may know, came out in '87. Great album. Here we have the back of there with the cool photos of the band. There you have that's Michael Bloodgood right there. Les Carlson, uh, David Sirferro, who went to be a producer. Left Bloodgood went AD, became, became producer. And Mark Welling on drums. Really cool. And this is on uh, blue vinyl. There you have it. Really cool. So. And here we have, last but not least, uh, all, uh, all Sunday Getter, uh, Dangerly Close on Vinyl, which is really cool. And there you have it. 
and this comes on now this is not red vinyl but it's more burgundy because you are a burgundy brownish uh there you have it very dark burgundy burgundy color color there you have it dangerously close so so uh i think i forgot to show you my the back of the blood first blood album here's the back oh i did i did show it there you have it back there anyway folks that's my tribute to uh Band Bloodgood. Um, Michael Bloodgood is an amazing bass player. Uh, you know, I find with their sound, uh, especially with the re with the reissue version, you really hear the bass coming through. And Michael Bloodgood was a prolific musician. I heard I heard he was a great person. I heard people that spoke about him, and he was a he's an awesome individual. Uh, had time for the fans. He's also a pastor. You can tell like the heart of Bloodgood that, that this was a ministry to them. That wasn't just being a band or being a star. It was a ministry. They really run a ministry to the fans. Which which kind of makes me reflect on my life. Uh, where, you know, life is short. And I want to encourage you guys who are watching this. Uh, the purpose of my video is to give tribute to these bands. Uh, they've influenced me uh, for the past three years of my life. Also bring glory to Him above as well. That's the purpose of my channel. And I want you guys to know that if you are not sure of where you stand with the Lord, this is about we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We only have the day or this moment. Like Carpe Diem sees a day. And if you're unsure where you stand with Christ, I would encourage you to uh, do some soul searching and get right with God and accept Him to your heart and, and ask Him to forgive you of all your sins. And if you do that, and, and, and he will start to make a change in your life, a change will come from inside out. He will, he will come inside and change you, make you clean, wash in his blood, and, and, and he will show you things that you, that you didn't realize before. And if you read his word, if you pray, and remain faithful to him, then, then he won't disappoint you. Anyway, folks, that's what I have right, and that was pretty much the mission statement of Bloodgood. That was their, that was their, um, um, uh, uh, that was what they believe as well. That if you get things right with God, if you accept Him, and by this freedom on the cross and the resurrection, then then you know He will He will do amazing things. And I just want to reflect on on that as well, and what and and what Bloodgood believes, and a lot of these bands I'm into believes that if you get right with God, He will show you amazing things. Anyway, folks, that's all I have right now. This is my tribute to Michael Bloodgood and the music of Bloodgood. And, um, and uh, you know, uh, make sure to support a band, uh, go to Gorda Records or the band's website or, or, or Retroactive Records or uh, Boone's Overstock stock, and pick up an album uh, or two or CD, CD or two or go on a band website and buy a shirt or buy a video uh, and support the band. I think. I think, I'm not sure, but I think maybe the proceeds that's generated will go towards uh, uh, the family and the, the band and uh, and that kind of thing. And I think Les Carlson will, um, I think he's going to, from this point forward, uh, pursue a solo effort, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think he put his effort putting in a song, and I think he has a, a, day, a concert too he's going to be doing. So uh, I look forward to that as well. What's gonna he's gonna do as well? What Lars Carr's gonna be doing, or whatever his future endeavor is gonna be, I look forward to hearing and seeing about that as well. So I'll definitely support that endeavor as well. You guys have a great day. All the best, and and stay heavy. Sounds one fifty. Bye now.